last project for my kids. They are working on their first comic. First, they had the dialogue and then the storyboarding. Dialogue for page one, dialogue for page two. Next, they had to sketch it out. And here's a sketch. I'm gonna take this from paper to digital real quick. All right, let's go. Let's go over the basics. Proportions number one. Drawing a regular human-sized body, proportional, is typically six heads tall. This is the artistic figure that most people go to. Six heads tall or five and a half heads tall. Chibis, which are super cartoony, non-realistic proportions, are typically two and a half heads tall. Once you have these basics down, you can play around with your proportions in your comic to whatever capacity you want. The goal of this project was to create a story in just three pages, a finished comic story, three pages long. Now this is really hard to do. Like short stories are hard to do because when you're writing a story, you think of all these details that you need to include. You want to include a background, you want to show the conflict, you want to have your characters, and you want to make the sequence of events make sense. So it's not surprising that a lot of people think this is pretty scary and rough and difficult to finish in general. Just saying to a few kids, hey, make three pages of whatever comic you want is a little, it's a little much. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little much to ask for a few kids. <laughs> because your head is just locked with all these creative options and ideas that you could pursue. To make it easy, break it down. Page one should be the introduction. Page two should be the middle action, the sequence the action, the main event. Page three, the concluding action after your climax. The conclusion, how does your story end? First thing I had my students do in my class was create two characters that this comic would be centered on. I had the students design their antagonist and protagonist first. So in this introduction scene, I'm setting up what the conflict is between the two characters. You have character number one, clearly interested in an item. And character number two, the antagonist, is also interested in this item. Boom, conflict has been set up. And we've been introduced to two completely different character designs, both distinct from one another. Before writing your comic, make sure you get that design down. Who is your antagonist and who is your protagonist? And what is the conflict between the two? Two distinct characters with two completely different character designs, that the audience can identify and read clearly because that's the point of a comic. You wanna show, don't tell. And really that's the challenge uh, I think most mangaka and just comic artists in general have with their storytelling. That's why dialogue is another aspect of this challenge that is difficult to work with because you don't wanna oversaturate your three pages with words. You wanna focus on what's going on in your panels. Your drawings are more important than the dialogue bubbles. Moving on to page two. Like I said before, page two is the climax where we see the action happen. The main conflict of the story comes to a boiling point and we see the antagonist and the protagonist go at it. And this is what I told my students. Now that you've written two characters and introduced them, I want you to show a fight scene between them, if possible, because who doesn't like a good shonen fight scene? And most of my students are huge fans of, let's say, Attack on Titan, uh, Demon Slayer, so I wanted them to go for it, really go for it. I like storyboarding first. You're always supposed to storyboard the action first. Who is getting hit? Why does the hit make sense? what powers are being showcased, like how are they getting hit, is it a punch or is it a kick? Uh, if it is a punch or a kick, is it like a, an ice punch, a fire kick? And here are my characters that have this really cool like holy power versus like hellfire power. And again, it just shows the difference between the character designs of the protagonist and the antagonist. So you want to make sure your fight scene is not only cool enough for you to look at, but is engaging storytelling wise. Now I know one of these people is evil or I'm supposed to look at them as such. And the other person is the clear good guy and their powers are reflected in the way they fight. Boom, we have a power up that's happening here. It's like a magical schoolgirl moment is revealed that these two have really cool powers. Setting up an action sequence is difficult again because it's a short story so you want to make sure the sequence of events leading up to the fight makes sense in this case 
you have antagonist stealing the sacred item from the protagonist. And boom, a fight scene ensues. A challenge is placed. We have a punch. We have a power up. We have fire wings. Now the character is being laughed at. It's like, a, oh, shit. What's gonna happen? What is this character gonna do? And it all culminates into page number three. One more thing you can probably notice in page number two is that there's less details in the background. My drawings are only focused on the poses and the action between the two characters because if I've done my job well, then in page number one, I've already established the setting with my drawings. Keep that in mind. Finally, page number three is the end of the story. It is immediately after the climax of the conflict and now we see the conflict resolution. What is the conclusion? What is gonna happen between your two characters? So is the antagonist just going to leave after the protagonist beats them? Does the protagonist win against the antagonist or does the antagonist win? There's a whole bunch of storytelling options that people can choose from. Some of my students actually ended up making a comic where the bad guy wins and everybody dies. It was really dark, it was out of nowhere, and it was a little funny to read. So that's them showcasing their creativity. In my comic, now this is a pretty cheesy ending because the protagonist and the antagonist become best friends. And I thought it was really cute, this ending of the two of them holding hands with the teddy bear and they decide to share. The conclusion of a story can serve multiple purposes. It could just be the end of these three pages or like some of my students asked me, what if it ended on a to be continued note and it ended on a cliffhanger? And I was like, shoot, go for it. But like I said, the challenge is to just make a complete finished story in just three pages. So whatever makes sense, whatever is the logical conclusion for this little narrative that we've created for ourselves. And the end of this narrative is after introducing two opposing characters, they fight, the conflict ends, the resolution is they become friends. And that is the end of my narrative. The most difficult aspect about this challenge, again, is making a short story narrative in just three pages. So you only have a limited number of panels, which means you have to break down the story into the most important sequence of events. Two characters interacting with each other, somebody does something to somebody else, and then we have the climax and resolution of that interaction. What's gonna happen? And that's the best part. You're the comic artist, you're the narrator, you're the author. You get to decide how your story ends. Most importantly, when you're coming up with your own story, I think it's super important to always add a unique spin to it. I love it when people subvert expectations. For instance, I'm using this magical girl genre where you have this really innocent idea of schoolgirls and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, boom, they're monsters or they're battle warriors and they're duking it out and somebody's fist is flying in another person's face. It's really cool. So subvert expectations, whether you're writing a shonen or a shoujo, make your own story, put something unique out into the world that you've never seen before. I find I do my best work when I draw by hand on a piece of paper and then I ink it in digitally and add color gradients and really give it that comic book flair. Let's check out the animation because I'm extra like that.